get moving. So, uh, good morning. Okay. okay, we'll try that one again. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Okay, that's the caffeine getting in. Um, I'm Stuart Maxwell. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, for this morning's uh, session on uh, you know, what's the use of uh, social media. Um, it's, uh, first of all, sort of maybe just the, uh, the three F's of uh, if there's a fire, the exit's behind us, and then follow the rest of the exit signs. Uh, for phones, um, please have them on mute. Um, we're hoping you're going to tweet along to hash SSP social metrics during the course of this. But we've heard that the uh, wireless uh, sort of limit for the conference has already reached its first limit. Uh, so we'll see how we get on with that, but we're hoping to follow the tweets as we go forward. And the third F is uh, thanks uh, to SSP, Jocelyn for organising this. Sorry, yes, British, don't know how to spell. Uh, and uh, Ginny Hendricks, uh, who was actually coordinating and moderating this, but unfortunately couldn't be with us uh, for the event today, so I've had to step in, so unfortunately you've got to listen more to me. Uh, so she's probably obviously too tempted by the Diamond Jubilee celebrations. Um, which just think if we didn't have that sort of little spat in 1775, you could have been enjoying too. <laughs> So uh, the session this morning is about sort of how publishers can act on social data uh, and insights to develop brands, relationships and, and products. Um, joining me today, very lucky, we've got uh, Susan Donovan from, from Atipod. Uh, and Susan is their manager of their sort of a, a solution architect. She's responsible for all their sort of implementations and customizations uh, and uh, sort of a, a long experience of developing products and is doing some great work in social media. Then we also have uh, uh, Patricia, uh, Patricia Cleary from Springer. And uh, Patricia is uh, very instrumental at Springer about bringing in much use, was very involved in mobile, uh, and has also uh, helped develop the organization's use of social media, particularly things like Spring, Springer protocols. Uh, so obviously we're gonna have to see a lot from that. Something else they share in common is they both have a sort of anthropology background. Um, so that maybe gives some interesting context to, to social as well. So the format of what we're going to do is we're each going to give a presentation of about 25 minutes. We'll then have a few questions afterwards. And then we hope to have a bit of a sort of a, a more of a discussion process at the end of this. Uh, so after each uh, presentation, we'll have a few questions, but then we hope to keep some questions more for sort of a, a, an interactive thing to, to have for the last half hour. Uh, as I say, we have got the tweet running as well. Um, so please do uh, sort of get those going if you can get access to the net. Um, we tried to get some things going beforehand. We, we put up a, a, a post on LinkedIn uh, specifically for the group to see if we get any questions or everybody what they wanted to hear about. Uh, we also publicised the hash uh, SSP social metrics piece in the program and online. Um, and uh, the highest number of responses we had for questions for this session actually came through via email. What that says about social media, I'm not too sure, but um, you know, we can make our own inferences about it. So uh, unfortunately you're going to have to carry on listening to me because I've been volunteered to start off on this. Um, and what I'm doing is uh, just giving a little bit of sort of a background piece on uh, sort of social media, where it is today, um, sort of how to, to the next slide, um, how to put it in context with the business. You know, we've heard lots of information about how fantastic social is, how it's here and what's going on with it, and everybody's very, very busy with social media. but. The thing is actually making sure it's relevant to what we're doing, and that's what we want to look at. And then specifically, kind of four examples, the most common things we see uh, with people, how they're using social media. First of all, where am I coming from on this? I've got a background in publishing for companies like Euromoney. Uh, I've also been involved in data standards and governance, so with ABC is the body that developed the audit process for Project Counter for use of statistics. In analytics and optimization, where I'm currently at Scholarly IQ, uh, but also with Omniture and Comscore. And I've worked with sort of leading brands in the UK and over here, people like BBC, The Times, uh, AIP, OSA, etc. In, in this particular field as well. And Scholarly IQ, our background is all about data. It's about pulling that in together. So this may be social data, it may be coming through from mobile, it may be journal data, article data, financial data, subscriptions, whatever else, mashing that together, making it compliant, and then putting that into other applications. But what I thought I'd first do is uh, start off with a, a quick clip, you know, how do we start a, a morning, get a video going, hopefully get the, the thought processes working. I'm hoping this is going to work. This is a little excerpt from a, a film out a little while back called Star Suckers. I don't know if anybody's seen it, but um, it gives an anthropological view, hopefully Susan and Patricia will appreciate it, uh, of sort of social media. So fingers crossed. Tick-tock, tick-tock. Unless, of course, this is linked on wireless, and then we've got no chance. 
Welcome to IBON, that doesn't sound good, does it? Have we all been welcomed to IBON today? Uh huh. Okay. We might get a bit slow. Okay, thank you. Why don't we come over there? Uh, no. Nope. <laughs> nope. Bueller. Anybody? Bueller? There. This, this all worked about an hour ago, just to let you guys know, I promise. Okay, well, we won't be seeing what are either of the really anthropological viewers. Um, essentially, sort of what I was looking at, uh, what they're talking through, was how, the, how we have a sort of innate behaviors. Uh, oh, hang on, we're around the wrong way now. How did you? Right. Sorry, Susan. Okay, um, essentially sort of what it was uh, uh, going to be telling you about, and a very interesting animation, trust me, um, was about sort of how it's kind of innate that we've got certain kind of characteristics. You know, if you go back to sort of early days, you maybe have people who like to form groups and those that didn't were sort of loners and they're more likely to get attacked by the saber tooth tiger and eaten up. Uh, then you had those that are more likely to sort of copy and imitate uh, sort of certain sort of other people who are being successful. Uh, and they would obviously be more successful because you can learn from other people's experiences. And then the third characteristic was about um, how you can essentially, uh, people have a, a tendency to form an entourage, look for those people that are most successful, uh, and look to connect and to link with those and to be associated. And those kind of innate behaviours that help sort of uh, uh, people come through from sort of cave dwelling types uh, are thought to be very closely linked into innately how we think about social media. Um, anyway, I'll hopefully put it online and with the presentation you can check it out another time. So apologies on a few minutes wasted there, but hopefully you get the, the gist. So we've had a big presentation about this morning about all the stats to do with social media and I think we generally know that social media has arrived. We're all spending a lot of time doing it, tweeting away, using up all the broadband uh, uh, wireless <laughs> data that we've got. Uh, and you know, it's the majority of the populations that we're dealing with are out there and doing it. However, putting it in context is different because as publishers, how do we get our way through that? We've all heard about, yes, social is used a lot, but if there's 250 million tweets a day, if there's 800 million updates on Facebook, 60 hours of content loaded on YouTube every minute, how do you as a publisher use that channel to actually make it relevant to you? And that's a, a bit of a difficult piece. And then the last bit there, that five minutes attention span. Now that's dropped down from about sort of 12 minutes, uh, about sort of say, over a decade ago. This is a piece in the Telegraph. Uh, there's research and uh, things with research is, is it skewed, who have you asked, all the rest of it rather than obviously counted. Um, but you know, that five minute attention span, if we're jumping that thing about you know, permanent semi awareness, um, we've got a bit of an issue about how we make sure that we get in front of this. And then what we've got is we've got this sort of social media landscape that is incredibly fragmented. Sure, we've got the big three players Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, your Google employee uh, in the middle there. Um, but then you've got all these different kind of channels that are happening there, publishing, sharing materials, playing, networking and buying and localization type pieces. And then there's loads and loads of different sort of social media channels in each of those. So it's a real difficult thing to grasp where we should be and what we should be doing. As publishers, we can probably get rid of the playing, the buying and the localization. You know, we're not really looking at you know, sort of things like um, uh, 
uh, where, where we've got here hunch and those kind of elements aren't really linking to our users and what we wanted to do. Things like publishing, sharing materials, and networking are very much where you know we can have some good effects. And not only is it complicated in social media having all this fragmentation, but we've also got social media to contend with with all the other channels that we might be looking at as well. And I hate to say it, we still do turn up events, we still do have print, we still have mobile, we still have telephones. You know that we speak to people on. Well, how does social weigh up against the rest of those? Uh, and putting it in context is a lot of the time is about getting that data. We can manage it, we can understand it, and we can put it through data by linking it together. And then from that insight, we can start to make some metrics and we can start to manage a business. However, what we find with social is we've got all these kind of terms out there that people talk about in social. How many times do we turn up to a, a high level meeting of management about where we're going to go to? And we say, well, what we really want to do is increase our numbers of fans and posts. Is that really going to drive what we're doing? We're after the share of voice? Probably a bit more, but it's hard to link that to really actually what we do. Now, if we look at digital metrics, they're getting a little bit closer. We've got leads and traffic and referrals and those kind of things. And then right in the middle, as publishers, you know, we've got subscribers, demographics, average order value, revenue, sales. Well, actually, yeah, that's kind of a bit more about where I want to be. So we've got to think about how we pull that together. And typically, we've got two ways of doing it. One is about integration, and that some data allows us to link a user, a group, an activity directly through to something online or to revenue or whatever else. And therefore, we can kind of extend the funnel. We can have a look at the direct correlation or attribute about where it links through to that. The second step is where we might have a correlation. So looking at the data here at the bottom, we can't integrate it. We can't say that is directly responsible for that as if it's uh, linked together. However, by looking at things next to each other, we can see that if, if, if Twitter activity goes up at this stage and then we find that our numbers of full text downloads corresponding to the increases after that period of time, well, actually, I may be able to make an inference correlating that data together to say that actually Twitter has had an effect. And so it's that kind of insight which is really going to help us drive and understand what's going on. So we want to kind of pull that data together. But before we do that, we might also want to think about the strategy a bit about what do we want. <coughs> so brand equity, obviously, is a big one that starts off with everybody. So Facebook has launched $110 billion. Our brains are hardwired to make us. So. Oh, he's come back. <laughs> Our brains are hardwired to make us network. Wasn't coming up on the screen. Our brains are hardwired. So, what am I going to? Brand equity. Our brains are hardwired to pay 110 billion dollars for Facebook. Uh, home thing sells a great price, by the way. Okay. Uh, so, brand equity. That's one bit. Uh, I can't, I'm not in the presentation. Brand actually, that's one element. Second, the research and, and market insight. We've got loads of tools out there, things like Radian 6, and uh, which are the other ones that are popping out of my head now. There's some from Kantar Media and various other ones there that go and listen to what's going on, and we can pick those up and we can have conversations around those. So we can research what people are thinking about now. We've got PR, we're obviously about putting our message out there in volume. And volume in two ways. Volume is in making our voice louder, uh, but also actually in increasing the amount of sort of uh, uh, people who are aware of us, the traffic that we might get. And then ultimately, at the end, bit, for a lot of people, is about getting some sales leads, some kind of business opportunities coming through from it. Which obviously these things all link into each other to, to, to make that effectiveness. Now, when we're thinking about the strategy, we also need to think who's responsible for that, who owns it, and that's a big question for most organizations. So we've got these sort of different ways, we've got these metrics of what we're doing, and okay, what's, what are these four examples? Well, the first one I've got is about the brand. Now, Ford is a big supporter of social media, and they talk about it as being bigger than advertising. What's interesting is that GM has pulled out of it. Two different businesses, both making and selling cars, one goes one way, the other goes the other. Now, they're both doing it for their own reasons. But typically what we look at, if you are an organization talking about the brand and something like Facebook, most organizations will look to put forward something about content, about offers, something that we're giving to somebody, some kind of sort of competition or some kind of app. And that's the sort of engagement that people look at. It's very difficult to do a personal engagement with a motive manufacturer. With people, however, if you're linking to an individual person, the most popular Facebook on, on, uh, person on Facebook is Eminem, you're looking at some kind of association or status or some kind of comment, some kind of exclusivity that you have a link with that individual, going back to those sort of uh, uh, innate behaviours. So as a publisher, we might think, okay, well, on our Facebook or social media uh, platforms, as an organisation, we might want to give some content if we're linking to a particular publishing company. 
However, we might have benefits from actually putting our authors or our editors up there on a personal basis and actually driving some form of usage by their own personal sort of experiences and therefore sort of associating in that way. So two different strategies of what to do. Thirdly, uh, so the second case, customer communication. Uh, a pop quiz of anybody who can think of uh, which two films these, these grabs are from. That's so it, network and the conversation. So there you go, those two. And the important thing here is that social media, everybody talks about you've got to listen. So with network, the phrase that goes from that one is, well, I'm as mad as hell and I'm not taking it anymore. If you use social media as kind of, we're just going to go out there and shout about what we're doing, you're going to find not much response. So that's kind of what we're looking at within the customer communication. And a quite well-known example of this was JetBlue, who won some rewards for, for their use of Twitter and social media. And this was a case of a chap who tweeted whilst he was going abroad uh, that on his flight he was being charged $50 for a fold-up bicycle that fitted in the same size of a piece of his luggage. Uh, which he should be able to take on as his, uh, as his, his one piece of luggage on it. So that went out, they were listening to it, they were using sort of uh, uh, social media tools for doing it, responded back, uh, changed the policy on it, this was within a 24 hour period, and then were able to publicize this as how they're responding to things. And that was a great example about what they're doing. So if we're thinking about that, who do we want to listen for? We're listening for people's uh, cust uh, uh, authors' names, uh, for our editors' names, key people, key staff, our company name, also, then we want to look at the other side. We want to look at our competitors. You know, uh, for what's happening actually in, 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 in other businesses because we can do that. It's research. Um, and the thing with a lot of this is, to, is, is, is that sometimes you can have too much noise coming from a small amount of individuals. So we always put it in context and perspective of actually, is this truly representative of everybody? Because if it's 10 people out of 1,000, 10,000, 200,000 customers, it may not be that much of a, uh, an issue and it's just a, a smaller response. But if we are responding, we need to do it in time. So we need to make sure that we're there actively. We don't let these things kind of run and fester in the background. We make it relevant. And then what you do with these users is you should be able to, with the right sponsors, build them into advocates. If they're really quite vociferous and they're shouting out a lot about you know, your, your, your business or your, your, your experiences with that business, if they're not happy in the first place, when you make them happy, they may well actually turn into advocates. So how can we work with that and how can we build on it? And we can see how that works because we can then track those individuals, we can correlate it back to what else is happening with the business and see if we're actually having an impact. If it is, great, carry on with it. If it's not, then they kind of can. You know. The third piece is about sort of, uh, SEO. Social media is a fantastic tool for getting into SEO without kind of all the black hat, dark arts that SEO has kind of uh, had a sort of reputation for doing. But if we have a quality piece of content, which is publishers, you know, we are ultimately looking for, we push that out there and the social applications boost sharing, whether we're putting that out through Dig or something uh, to make that work. And then we're seeing that being built on social platforms, linking to it, people retweeting about it, and it's going out through that, 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 that sort of social network. We're then building traffic, and as we get those links, we're building our reputation. The links build up, the search engines see us more, we're linked through to more authoritative sources, and therefore we're going to go up in the algorithms. From that, we see our organic traffic boosted, and therefore we're going to see overall on-site social usage. So this is where sort of social will work for actually acting as a sort of marketing campaign and driving more use from what we're doing. And the final piece I want to talk about was about sort of actually traffic to the site. Now we know we get referrals, how many is another question, but actually we can link this all the way through. And here is a piece of analytics where actually we've got those core usage stats that actually affect our business, you know, at JR1. We look at it on sushi reports of what people are downloading and reporting uh, of, of usage for their subscriptions. And pretty much 80, 90% of the time it's the JR1 that they get those full text downloads. Well, if that's the case about how they're judging our service and our business and our value to them, well, actually, then that's what I want to look at. So therefore, by looking at those links, I should be able to apply a filter. And I say, I want to look at all my JR1s for my articles, for my journals, whatever else it is I've got. But I want to look at that only for traffic coming through from Facebook or D or whatever else it is, all those plethora of different social media channels that I've got. And I want to look at it in that context. And by that way, I've really got some metrics that I can then turn around and say, I'm doing this in social media because of this effect and this is what I'm looking to achieve. So that's kind of sort of where I'm, I'm, I'm looking at those four examples and how to put that, that in context. So kind of sort of a number of sort of takeaways just to finish off my piece here. First of all, social media, yes, we know it works for users. We've seen all the numbers, everybody's busy and what's going on. The question is actually, how does it work for you and, and, and your business? Because that's what we're here for. Secondly, is this issue about social media being fragmented. There's all sorts of channels. 
there's all sorts of different pieces of it, and there's going to be different ones popping up as we go along. They'll come, they'll go, you know, and some will be dominant. There are a few dominants already out there. They get all the attention. Um, but you may find that particular niche ones, Mendeley or Academia or whatever else, are going to be more driven for you because that's particularly where our audience are going, coming from. The other piece is to put it in terms of the business or the rest of the channels you've got. We all talk about social media. I look through a newspaper every day and things like Twitter have more mentions in it than, than any other channel. You know, the, the, the press and everything else is focused and obsessed with what's going on in social media. Is that right for us? We may be better off organizing something like an event where you get your friends together and you have a chat about social media rather than actually all going out on social media. Just a thought. The second bit is you can put it in context. Uh, you know, we can either integrate it if the data supports to do that or we can correlate it and we can look at it side by side so we can actually see how it's working for us. Next though, you've got to know what you want from it. You know, what is it? If different people in an organization will want different things. You know, senior management might say, I just want our brand to be up there. I want us to be more aware. You know, and there's a direct link and actually um, even uh, uh, things like sort of investment houses, they look at social media tools, they look at which companies are more mentioned and they link it directly to stock prices. You know, they look at how people are feeling about those brands. Whether that is a, as, as a student financial instrument indicator, I don't know, but you know, they are out there and they're doing it. Is that the reason? Is it about PR? Is it about research of products? Know what it is, first of all, that you're looking to achieve from it. Do try it out, but then start to you know, really get a strategy and then start to respond to it. And when we're responding to it, we've got to listen, then respond and engage, keep those relationships going, because if they are productive, they will you know, sort of have, a, have an exponential, hopefully an exponential effect over the rest of their network. And the final point is throughout all of this, we are able to measure it, and therefore we can optimize those experiences, those campaigns, and we can prioritize which channels are really going to work for us. And if we're prioritizing those, we can say, well, actually, which ones do we want to support? You know, as publishers, we are in a situation where we own, well, well we, we are two assets, those commodities that Chat's talking about. There's the content, and then there's the relationships with our users and our readers and our authors. You know, and so therefore, we want to know how to, how to manage those best, and the data will support us in doing it. And then the final bit I wanted to bring up was uh, a, a Banksy uh, piece, which is uh, the elephant in the room. And uh, with social media, I, I go to a fair number of social media conferences, and you know, a lot of it is all about this many people tweeting and this many people uh, on YouTube and Facebook and all the rest of it, and how much time we spend. But for publishers, there's always this, this, these two questions of these, the, the elephant in the room. One is about governance. On social media platforms, who owns that relationship? Who owns the data of everything that's going through? We invest as a publisher a lot into a social media platform as being a channel for us. Actually, where's the ownership of that? If something goes wrong, actually, generally our users will look to the publisher, even though it may be on another platform, as to blame. And it may not be your fault. So there's a governance issue and there's questions about data privacy and all sorts of other things that may come up. And the second elephant in the room that they always talk about is the question about competition. If we own these relationships of content, relationships with individuals, if we embrace and we go and put all these things into social media, what are we doing potentially actually in a competitive environment that actually this stuff may be sort of replacing parts of our business? And you know, there's, there's a whole can of worms there. This is about what's the use of social media, and hopefully we're giving you a picture, an introduction to some of those. Um, but also, you know, the other side of the coin, a little thing to think about of um, you know, what are the other issues that are involved in it. And I think it's important to have that, that kind of context. So anyway, I've rattled through that one. Sorry about the video. Uh, and uh, that's kind of, you know, sort of that, that, that presentation. So thank you. So uh, as I said, any sort of questions? Uh, hopefully it's sort of a, a couple of a few minutes for, for those. Um, but we'll hopefully be having a bit more of a sort of a round table sort of uh, uh, discussion and, and panel piece. <coughs> Yes, please. Hi, so I'm just wondering if you've got a, I mean obviously, I'm not very specific figure, but if you've got a general feel for how much traffic comes from social media sites versus, you know, traditional public or scholar, whatever. Uh, the, the, the question you asked back on that one is for whom? Um, because each site is going to find it in a different right. activity, and that's, that's the whole point. You know, and um, uh, YouTube, for example, now gets more traffic to it from Facebook than it does from Google. You know, which is that's amazing. Something like 60% of the traffic to, to YouTube comes from Facebook. 
but does that it's very different to, a, to another business it's the whole point is you need to manage it you understand which campaigns which activities are going to be succeeding that so if I know I do a bit more on social media at this time and I'm either integrating it to, to look through from my links coming through from that social media page or whatever else I can see those referrals so on the traffic site uh, alternatively, if I'm, I'm monitoring you know, sort of the buzz that's going on in the, in, in, in the market, and if I see that increasing over a period of time, and I see that you know, my usage is also correlating to go up as well, then actually I can see that that's some form of success. But you know, the, the whole thing is about putting it in context of what you're trying to do. Um, you know, we can shout from the rafters, but the whole point is that everybody's going to be in a different boat uh, from where they are. Because there's an industry trend, I, I, I wouldn't like to say, but I think the best thing is to Figure, look at your own numbers and then look to say how can I improve that next time. Is that okay? Okay, thank you. Uh, have you done everything else? Okay, well then on that case, um, delighted to hand over to Patricia Cleary. Uh, and uh, Patricia is going to be presenting a bit more about how uh, Springer as a leading international publisher uh, is managing and, and is using social media.